Hey guys, it's Mariah, the Dairy State Vegan, coming to you from the Trader Joe's parking lot. So I wanted to film just a super easy vegan dinner um, featuring all Trader Joe's products today because I am in the middle of moving and packing and it's either really easy Trader Joe meals or I'm gonna have to Postmates vegan pizza for 10 days. So I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna whip up using just a few simple ingredients from Trader Joe's today. So we're before we do that, I want to update you on my law of attraction video um okay law of attraction video and so I made that video telling y'all how we had to move and I was feeling really down and just no doors were opening and that I was gonna change my mindset and I knew that weekend we were gonna find a place to live well let me tell you not only did we find a place to live we got approved actually for several places but the same day that I made that video I decided to change my search a little bit so I'd been searching for three bedroom houses or duplexes um, and just not finding anything or getting any leads so I decided I would change my search to two bedroom and then if any of the two bedrooms that popped up had a den or like an extra office space that would work out really well for us well I changed my search found a house went and looked at it that day and by 10 a.m. on Saturday the next day literally less than 24 hours after I made that video for y'all we got approved and not just for a house y'all it is so nice it's a flat it's a lower level duplex it has a crystal chandelier in the dining room my office is a four season room there's windows all around so it's super bright and sunshiny the kitchen is huge I'll be able to do so much more cooking videos um, so I'm just really excited and I wanted to give you guys this little testimony to encourage you and show you like it happens change your mindset be grateful like think positive thoughts and you will get what you have coming to you so on that note let's go shopping for my super easy vegan dinner from Trader Joe's today Trader Joe's is easily one of my favorite most affordable grocery stores with tons of vegan options so my first step was to pick up some of these mushrooms for my vegetable roast. My husband and son hate them, which just means more for me. And then I had to pick up a cucumber, and these cucumbers were huge and only 79 cents a piece. And then also had to get some tomatoes for a really simple salad that I'm gonna make with dinner that I will show you later on in the video. These tomatoes were so good. I love summertime for tomatoes. They have the most flavor and they're just so yummy. Then here is the pesto that I'm gonna use in tonight's dinner. Trader Joe's has a vegan pesto and so does Whole Foods. Trader Joe's is so much cheaper and so good. And then obviously I needed to get a crusty loaf of bread to go with tonight's dinner. This is a cauliflower gnocchi I've been hearing all about. Um, it's a super affordable price. One bag fed my husband, myself, and my son, and it was really good. I don't think I cooked it properly, and you'll see that later on in the video, but it still tasted really, really good. Then I wanted some potatoes for my vegetable roast, and I like this mixture with the purple potatoes in there. It's just really fun. I like giving Cody food that seems fun. And we needed olive oil. So, boom, magic of television. We are back in my kitchen, and I'm ready to start prepping this super simple dinner. Don't mind my inside out joy that I'm wearing. I didn't realize till halfway through the video, and then I fixed it. So that's what the purple potato looks like on the inside. They're just really fun. It's a fun way to get kids to eat new, exciting things if it's different colors. So I cut up all my potatoes just into decent sized chunks, because we're gonna roast them in the oven before we put in the other vegetables for about 15 minutes at 350 degrees. So you don't want the chunks to be too big because you want them to cook through. Then I'm just gonna add some olive oil to my potatoes. And then of course my holy grail of seasoning, salt, pepper, and garlic. I put that on just about everything, sometimes with modifications, but I swear you can make yummy food just by using salt, pepper, and garlic for almost anything. I never measure my seasonings. I always season to taste. Um, if you feel like you have to measure, I always say measure a little bit and then add it as you need to go. You can always add more, you can't take it away. So if you tend to have a heavy hand by just uh, winging it, definitely measuring would be recommended. And then to get all of these potatoes coated in the seasoning and olive oil, I just put them in a cheap Tupperware 
and shook it all up. And then save that Tupperware and put it aside for the vegetables later on. Once they're thoroughly coated, I'm just gonna put them on my tin foil lined baking sheet. I like to line my baking sheets with tin foil. It just saves me time with cleanup. As a full-time working mom and someone who's packing to move and everything else, the less work I have to do at the end of a meal, the better. So I'll just get these on the pan and then get them into my preheated 350 degree oven. Oh, that tag, it's gonna kill me. I can't believe I didn't notice. Y'all, I swear I have no brain. So once I get the potatoes in the oven, I'm gonna chop up the other veg for the roast. I just added mushrooms and asparagus to this. I had already had half of a um, package of asparagus from a dinner the other night, so I knew I wanted to use that up, and then I always, always love roasted mushrooms. So after I'm done cleaning my mushrooms, I'm just gonna slice them in half. I like big, meaty ch chunks of mushrooms, and then put them right in that container I had seasoned the potatoes in. This is gonna save me cleanup for later, but also save me on spices, because I won't need to season these as aggressively as I season the potatoes, because there's already seasoning in the container. My husband needed a spoon, and didn't want to come into frame. So that's what I was, that's what I was getting out of the drawer. And then here is a neat trick on how to trim your asparagus. So a lot of people just cut it and sometimes I can leave you, either you cut off too much or you have like really woody ends. If you just snap your asparagus, it will naturally snap in the spot where you should be cutting it. So I always just snap my asparagus and it's always perfect. I never have woody end asparagus and I never waste any either. And I put all of this aside to compost it for later. So once all my asparagus is trimmed, I'll just add those stalks directly in with the mushrooms. And we're gonna add some olive oil to that and a little more seasoning, and then shake them up just like we did with the potatoes. And then once I'm done shaking this up, I just set it to the side because the potatoes really need to cook for a good 15 minutes before you add the rest of your veg. Otherwise, you're either gonna have undercooked potatoes or overcooked mushrooms and asparagus. So go ahead and just set that to the side and we'll start on our salad. So for the salad, you just need two tomatoes, a big cucumber, and red onion. I'm gonna slice up my cucumber into circles and then slice those circles in half just to have good hearty chunks of cucumber in the salad. So once my cucumber is all cut up, I will throw it in my bowl over there, just leave room to cut up the rest of the vegetables. I do have a bigger cutting board, but it's a glass one, and I just don't like it as much as I like this little one. Next, we're gonna cut up our two tomatoes. One of my favorite things about cooking vegan is that I never have to worry about cross-contamination with my cutting board or my knives. I can literally just use the same cutting board and same knife throughout the whole entire meal. So once the tomatoes are sliced and put into the bowl, then I'm gonna slice off the red onion. This red onion, for some reason, I felt like the top ring was a little darker than I wanted it to be in the middle. So I just put that into the compost bin and um, used a different slice. I used like a half inch thick round slice of the red onion and then I sliced that up into eighths, kind of like you'd cut up a pizza, and then just dumped that right into the bowl along with my cucumber and tomato. Then I'm gonna squeeze a full lemon worth of lemon juice. I worked for a Greek family one time and the wife was so gorgeous and so youthful and she told me that the secret to beautiful skin and youth, youthful appearance is adding lemon and olive oil to everything. So I always think about her when I cook and I use the lemon and olive oil on almost all of my salads. So then I'm gonna use a little oregano in this to give it a little bit of a Greek inspired flavor. Thank you, Katerina. And then again, my holy grail of seasoning salt, pepper, and garlic. This salad would also be really good with like a vegan feta cheese. I didn't get out and get any, but we have a 
vegan restaurant here that sells the Via Life cheese and they have a vegan feta and I'm dying to try it. So maybe I'll make a, another video with the salad with the vegan feta as a taste test one day. So I added salt, pepper, garlic. We're gonna put a drizzle of olive oil to kind of bind everything together and meld the flavors. And then once this is all stirred up, I'm gonna put it in the fridge to rest while I'm cooking the rest of my food. That'll give the flavors time to kind of blend together and just turn into a really yummy marinated vegetable salad. And that's what it should look like once it's all mixed up. You guys, this was so good. My husband and son both really enjoyed it. So now that that's in the refrigerator, I'm gonna take out the potatoes that have been roasting separately and I'm just gonna turn them so that they won't stick to the foil and I'm gonna add the rest of my veg to the pan so that it can roast while we work on our gnocchi. And I'm not kidding, this whole meal from start to finish, even though I did three different dishes, took me about 35 minutes. So it was super fast, super simple, and everybody liked it. Not to mention, it was very, very nutritious. You can see here my tag is on the right side because my husband had informed me my, my joy was inside out. All right, let's try this cauliflower gnocchi. Now, I'm pretty sure I messed it up because it was a little mushy. That's the vegan pesto. But it did taste really, really good. I just think I maybe cooked it wrong. So how you're supposed to cook it is you're supposed to put it in the pan and then put one quarter cup of water in with it and then cover it until it warms through for about eight minutes. But the whole bottom of my pan wasn't covered with water, so I added a little bit more water, and that was a mistake for sure. It definitely turned out much more gloppy than you would want your gnocchi to be, but it still tasted really good. So you can see here what I'm talking about, how it looks a little gloppy. And then once it's cooked through and the water is evaporated, you're gonna add butter or oil to the pan. I use the Miyoko's vegan butter and just added it to the pan, and then you leave the gnocchi in there for about another eight minutes to brown. Mine didn't get very brown, but I think it's because I put too much water in there. It did taste really good though. So here you can see I'm just flipping the gnocchi, hoping it'll be brown a little bit, and it just kind of got a little gluey to the spatula. But it was fine. Next time it'll be better, I guarantee it. Checking on my veg and how long I have till I can serve up dinner. So now I'm just gonna add, I added maybe about a half of the container of pesto to this one bag of gnocchi. It was a perfect amount of seasoning. Um, I thought I could have added a little bit of salt to the gnocchi, but my husband actually thought it was seasoned perfectly. So if you like a little extra salt, I would salt the gnocchi before the pesto, but otherwise, pesto is so much flavor. So this is what it looked like when it was all done. And our veg is roasted and ready, and it's time to plate dinner. This was really so much food and so filling. We were all full when we were done. And we just had a plate full of vegetables. I definitely think something to keep in mind when you're making a vegan dinner is to make sure you have a lot of food. A lot of times we think, oh, we have to have small portions and this and that, but that's not necessarily the case if you're making a plant-based vegan dinner. You really wanna make sure there's enough food on the plate to hit all your nutritional needs, but also to fill you up, because otherwise you're gonna be hungry and feeling like this is the worst lifestyle and just feeling like you're lacking. And you should never feel lack when you're eating this way. I love mushrooms, so I was putting a bunch on my plate. I ended up eating all the mushrooms, nobody ate any of them. And then of course, our crusty bread. I just cut off a big hunk of the end, and then I'm gonna put that vegan butter on it. This vegan butter is really good, but I will say, um, I also really enjoy the Earth Balance butter, and at least in the grocery stores by me, the Earth Balance is about a dollar cheaper. And there you have it. There is our finished dinner. All right, y'all, thank you so much for watching this video. If you'd like to see more cheap, easy vegan dinner idea videos, let me know in the comments below. Also, comment below with your favorite easy, cheap vegan meal to make. Make sure you like this video, hit that subscribe button, and hit the little bell to get notifications when I put out some new videos, and I will talk to y'all later.